Hey everybody, welcome to the Enrich Your Soul podcast. I'm excited to be back. I have a whole bunch of new content for you, new guests that are gonna be coming on soon. And so I'm excited to launch in with today's message about self-belief and the power of self-belief and what it unlocks for us in our lives, both personally and professionally. Now, in my presentations, my keynotes, and also in my coaching sessions that I've been doing, everything revolves around this concept of self-belief because no matter if you're trying to develop yourself personally or professionally, you've got to start with this core that you actually can achieve the things that you're setting out to achieve. Whether it's a little bit of development, a little bit of improvement, or you've got a big goal that you want to hit, it all starts with our concept of self-belief. So I want to talk today about why we typically don't believe in ourselves as much as we should and then also what we can do to increase that self-belief and things that you can do on a daily basis to enhance that. So when we think about why we don't believe in ourselves as much as we should, you know, if you think about a a child, a young child, they believe in themselves a lot. Like they're, they're ready to take on the world. They're ready to move forward with things. They're trying to walk. They're trying new things. They're, they're curious about everything. And at some point in our lives that changes and whether it's peer pressure, you know, family pressure, whatever that is, we start tainting our thoughts and our behaviors with this doubt. And it, it, it increases over time, especially as we become more socially engaged, as we get into our professional world, that happens quite a bit. And the more we have different activities that we have, or more engagements, or more projects, or more things that we're testing and trying and sometimes not coming up with the best results on, we start doubting ourselves. And so I want you to think about where maybe those rooted thoughts came from. Maybe your parents were hard on you. Maybe you had siblings that were hard on you. Maybe you were teased or bullied in school, or maybe you were told something by somebody. In these coaching sessions that I've been having lately, I've been talking with some very high-level executives that will come back and say, you know what, the core of my lack of self-belief stems from my mom said this when I was a kid. My teacher told me this when I was in high school. Uh, My college professor told me that I wasn't good enough at something. And then we start doubting ourselves. And it's this slippery slope that we get into that that one, it could be one simple comment. And then all of a sudden we start questioning everything moving forward. So first things first, identify when that is in your life. And then I want you to sit in that thought for a few minutes. That was their perception of your ability, not yours. It, but you allowed their perception to taint the, the, the view of yourself or taint the waters of your self-belief. So in that exercise, I also want you to stop and I want you to erase that doubt. I want you to to say, you know what, even if it's a matter of pulling up a picture of the individual or just imagining them in your mind and say, you know what, that's your opinion. And when you do that, you separate their belief from yours. Because if you have that self-confidence, it doesn't matter what other people say. Yeah, it stings because we want to be seen and heard and respected as much as possible. And when, so when somebody doubts us or when somebody questions our ability or we make a mistake and somebody jumps on a failure that we've had, we all of a sudden start doubting ourselves. So it is up to you to say, look, this is when it happened and now I'm separating myself from that belief because it's not true. Everybody makes mistakes. Nobody is perfect and everybody will, will fall short some point, sometime. They'll, you'll make a mistake, you'll have a misstep, but that doesn't determine who you are moving forward. So one, identify where that root cause came from. Two, separate yourself from it. So now let's talk about ways that you can continue to enhance your self-belief in ways that, you know, a few different things that you can do on your day-to-day basis to make sure that you're enhancing your self-belief. Now one, positive self-talk is is a massively underrated thing. A lot of people will say, oh, you know, that that seems very woo-woo and fluffy, like, you know, all this positive self-talk. When we think about the fact that I think it's over half, around 60% of our thoughts are either neutral or negative, you don't have much bandwidth for positivity in your life. So it is up to you to determine how much positivity you're going to have, especially when it comes to your self-belief. So if you spend the day reassuring yourself, spend some time in the morning meditating, thinking about how you're gonna show up in the day and how you're going to be confident and positive throughout the day. I did that this morning with my Peloton meditation with the DT. It was how do you wanna show up? And I want to show up authentic. I want to show up empathetic. I want to show up positive. I want to show up confident. That's my mindset. And yeah, as the day goes on, there are going to be challenges to that. But it's up to me to come back to that self-belief. So positive self-talk is a big factor in how we succeed in life. 
Two, you are a product of who you surround yourself with. I believe this holistically. When you are around people that are confident in themselves or they're vulnerable enough to trust in you, you create this, this circle of positivity, the circle of encouragement, the circle of confidence. And so if you surround yourself with those people that have that self-belief, they understand that they're not perfect either, but they're confident in their abilities because we often let those people into our world that they'll just make a comment here or there. I'm not good enough or that was stupid of me. Even those comments start eroding at your own self-confidence because then you're letting that toxic behavior into your world. Now, again, it's a habit that we all have and you just to be more mindful of it. Whether you're saying it to yourself or people are saying it to themselves around you, you're going to absorb that energy. So make sure that you are identifying who you're surrounding yourself with and what they're contributing to your world as far as energy goes. Next, I want you to evaluate your routine, your behavior, your schedule. How are you taking care of yourself physically, mentally, and emotionally? Are you getting enough sleep? Are you putting yourself in, in, in less than desirable situations as far as stress goes? If you do a life audit and figure out what am I doing, how am I conducting myself, because we get into these habits and these routines that maybe aren't as ideal as they should be for our energy. And if you think about the days that you wake up and you got a good night's sleep, you've eaten healthy lately, maybe you've been moving your body a little bit so you feel lighter, you feel more energetic, the, the way you perform and the way you think on those days are is vastly different than when you don't get enough sleep, when you are overly stressed, when you're working yourself too hard, when you're not taking self-care time in your day, you feel less than. I can tell you distinctly, there is a difference in my performance, in my behavior, in my attitude, in my energy, if I get a good night's sleep versus when I don't, or if I'm managing my stress or I'm not, or if I'm eating healthy and exercising or I'm not. Or if I'm interjecting that positive self-care time, even if it's five minutes a day, that makes a big, big difference in how I conduct myself and how I feel every single day. So do a life audit. Are you taking care of yourself? Are you sleeping enough? Are you exercising? Are you eating healthy? And make the adjustments where necessary to make sure that you're putting yourself in the best position for success. Next, let's talk about the idea that Failure is not a good word to have in your vocabulary. There are going to be mistakes. Again, I mentioned it earlier. You're going to make mistakes. You're going to fall short on things. Those are opportunities because you have the opportunity in that moment to either just criticize yourself, get down on yourself, let other people get down on you, or say, okay, this is, this is what happened. Here's what I can take away from this experience. This is what I'm going to do better next time. Or Maybe I need to increase a skill of mine or enhance some knowledge that I need to succeed next time. When you identify those opportunities, instead of looking at them as failures and a dead end road of mentality, you can change the dynamic, you can change the self-talk and you can change the positivity within that interaction to make sure that it is as positive as you need it to be. So look at any kind of a misstep or a mistake as an opportunity, not a failure. Next. Make sure you're celebrating your positive wins. I don't care if it's, you know, I worked out three days in a row. I ate healthy two days in a row. I got a good night's sleep last night, one day in a row. Celebrate those small victories. Maybe you wanted to send 10 emails today for your business. If you send those 10 emails, take a few minutes and celebrate yourself. Be proud of yourself. When we take that time, even in the small victories, we build positive dopamine effect. So as we're looking at our day and we're thinking, oh yeah, I absolutely, I, I got that done and I got that done and I knocked that out of the park and I made that phone call or I, I finished that proposal or I got that business. Every time you have a small win, that builds positive momentum. So don't shy away from those things and celebrate yourself in a little way. Go ahead, get up and take a walk, call a friend, do something for yourself for a few minutes and then move on. But that positive hit, that positive mentality will build that momentum because as we all have big goals or we should have big goals, that positive little step every single day will help you build the momentum to get up that hill, to, to, to achieve that big goal, to overcome that obstacle. And if we're thinking in a mental momentum, uh, positive momentum, then we have a better chance at achieving those big things. So celebrate your small wins as they come along and you will be in a better mental state from a momentum perspective and just from a general positivity and self-belief stance. 
Another thing you need to be aware of is in the opportunities that we have or the, the situations where maybe we come up a little bit short, we often go to our weaknesses. We focus on our weaknesses and that creates this negative self-talk spiral. When those situations come up, you need to focus on the things that you are strong in. So if something happens, what, what about that made you shine? What were you really good at? Because very rarely, if ever, do we have just an all out failure that something, something happened that everything went wrong. There was something in that experience that you did positively or was a strength for you. Focus on that instead of focusing on the weakness that you exhibited in that, in that stance. That weakness is your opportunity for growth. Identify that too and go after that weakness and figure out what you need to do to increase your knowledge or your ability in that area. And finally, one of the biggest traps in the lack of self-belief is fear. And I will say wholeheartedly, I have exhibited or I've, I've experienced both fear and hesitation, but I've also experienced what I call the theory of why not. So all the things when I think about my life resume, my professional resume, there are moments in time that I can draw a distinct line to say, I believed in myself and I just went for it. And I didn't think about it. I didn't have any reservations. I didn't have any doubt in my mind. And honestly, a lot of the things that I've done have been ridiculous big goals or big shots that I've taken that were kind of like, ah, eh, you know, if it happens, great. If it doesn't, at least I took the shot. Because all the time we will we will sit in these ideas that, well, I want to, but I but I shouldn't. Or I'd love to try that, but uh, I'm not good enough. Or I, why me? Or I don't have the I don't have the credentials for that. Or I don't have the ability. Or I don't have the backup resume to show that I can do these things. Why not take a shot? Why not? What's the worst that can happen? You hear a no. Okay, great. I close that door and I move on to a different opportunity. Or if you don't take the chance at the big thing, or you know have a, a lofty, ridiculous goal, I believe that everybody should have a goal that when you write it down on paper, you're like, that looks ridiculous, and it should be. You should stretch yourself. You should try something bigger and better than you ever have tried before. It should be something outlandish because if you go at that goal and you try it, even if you come up short, you gave it a good go. I have taken many a shot in my life that haven't come through, but the ones that did were such phenomenal experiences that I can't imagine them not being a part of my life. But had I not believed in myself, had I not said, you know what, I'm going to give this a try and give it my best and whatever happens, happens. That mentality alone will allow you to take a shot at something that you maybe have been putting on the side for a while, or maybe you needed to figure out what that path was to get to that. So yeah, have an outlandish goal, have a really fun big goal, but then also have some very practical big goals. And I, I'm a firm, firm believer in two things that, as far as this goes, visualization and reverse engineering that goal. So when you think about that big practical goal that you want to achieve, what does it look like? What does it feel like? What is that title that you want? What is that financial status that you want? Where do you want to be? How do you want to be living your days? If you can visualize that crystal clear and understand this is what my life is going to be like when I achieve this, it's a lot easier to go after. If you go after some gray, um, gray description, very loose description goal with no concrete visualization to it, it's going to be a lot harder to achieve it. And it's going to be a lot harder during that path to stay after it. When we have a crystal clear goal, and I talk about my marathon training when I ran the New York City Marathon all the time in the sense that I, had, I knew I wanted to cross the finish line. I knew that's all I wanted to do. And I visualized that every single day that I trained and it happened. And that to me is what the power of visualization does. Because there were a lot of days I didn't want to run. There were a lot of days I didn't want to work out. There were a lot of days I'd rather eat this than that. But I knew in order to get across the finish line, I had to be in a certain physical shape, a certain mental shape. And, and I achieved that because I visualized it. So what is that for you? What is, what is that visualization? If you sit and think for a few minutes, what is my ideal scenario? What is my ideal job? What is my ideal lifestyle? Picture that. Write it down. Put very specific details to it. Very, very specific details, because the more specific, the more achievable it is. If you think about trying to drive from one location to another, it's a lot easier than to say, I'm driving from my house to somewhere in Kansas City to find this place. 
Or if you had a precise address, it's a lot easier to get there. Even if you looked it up on Google Maps and saw a picture of the building, it's a lot easier to get to that location than it is to just say, I'm gonna go somewhere and find something. That in of itself is, is critical to understand the, the power of visualization there. And when it comes to reverse engineering, once you have that picture in your head, when you understand exactly where you need to get to, walk backwards. What do you need to have in place to make that happen? What skills do you need to learn? What connections do you need to make? What opportunities do you need to pursue? What do you need to do along that path from the current status that you're in now to get to that ideal location, that ideal arrival? When you can reverse engineer that, you can put into place the steps, the milestones, the smaller goals that you need to achieve to get to that point. And if you have those, it's a lot easier. Again, think about trying to climb a, a set of stairs with the light on. It's a lot easier and you feel more confident. But if the light was off, you're gonna step more gingerly. You're gonna reach for that, that step with your foot. You're probably doing it right now mentally and you feel that emotion. But it's a lot easier when you can see the stairs to get to the, to get to the goal, to get to the top of the stairs. That is a lot easier to do in the light, with the light on and that is when you reverse engineer your goal. So think about that the next time you want to achieve a goal, walk backwards from that ideal finish line and figure out what steps need to be in place. That will turn the light on on your goal and make it a lot easier to get there. So here we go on the path of self-belief. Today is the day that you draw a line in the sand. You're not going to be down on yourself. You're not going to dismiss your big goals. You're not going to dismiss your abilities anymore. You are going to believe in yourself more today moving forward consistently. I'm not going to say it's going to be perfect every single day, but at least when you have that power of self-belief, even if something goes sideways, even if you start doubting yourself a little bit, it's easier to get back on the path to success. So today is the day I'm going to hold myself accountable for you and with you. And I want you to hold yourself accountable for me and for the rest of us, because we need you at your best. We need you to believe in yourself. So many people will believe in you for you, but it all starts with you. And so if you can believe in who you are, what you're capable of, and what you can go do, that brings more confidence and more self-belief than you can ever imagine. So follow these tips, dismiss the doubt you've previously carried to this point. It's gone and done. Move past it because you have better days and bigger goals and more happiness and success ahead of you. Thank you so much for listening to this episode. I hope this helps. I hope this sets you on the path to self-belief. I hope you're sitting in your chair more confidently, your back straighter, a big smile on your face to go get what you deserve. Today is the day that it starts. And I want you to keep carrying that forward and build that momentum. If you have something you're chasing, I would love to hear it. I want to hold you accountable. I want to be your, your goal partner. So send me a message, rich at richracken.com. Send me a message on Instagram or LinkedIn. Uh, you can find me on there. All the links are on my website. Um, but subscribe to the, to the podcast. I've got some amazing episodes coming, some amazing guests, some dynamic conversations that, that are coming, um, and some big announcements that are coming too. So please subscribe to the podcast and please recommend the podcast to others because you never know who's going to need a little bit of enrichment and a whole lot of self-belief. Thanks. We'll see you next time.